to build up that kind of uh, uh, experience with with NICE. I'm using NICE, but other agencies obviously are also important. Um, and then once companies see that kind of positive reaction, I think they will be less unhappy about moving away from Excel. I, I would also say, you know, um, in some of the examples that I, I mentioned earlier, you know, one of the issues that we had was we built, um, you know, a discrete event simulation tr uh, treatment sequencing model um, in R and then went to a meeting in which, you know, a load of country affiliates were attending and their issue was, well, how do I adapt this model? This is not going to work. So essentially, the company then rebuilt or tried to the same model or a simpler version of it in Excel for those country affiliates. And so that is also an issue. And I, I think that kind of links into some of the things that we're talking about in terms of training. You know, I think this has been a really great workshop uh, over the two days. You know, we've seen a lot of really interesting presentations, but quite a lot of them were probably not the sort of thing that would help someone. You know, it's not the sort of level of training that, that perhaps we need. Mm -hmm. And perhaps it's not, you know, quite a lot of them were quite technical, um, which I think is really interesting for those people who are really into R. But actually, you know, for people who are trying to learn, it may not necessarily be the most appropriate way to go ahead. That's a very good point. And just to, again, to play devil's advocate, uh, the plan was that we were going to have alongside the workshop some more specific training on, on, you know, the basic intro to R kind of thing. But obviously, the world happened and, uh, and, and we had to scrap that. But that, that's a very good point. Yes. I mean, I, one of the things I maybe just to pick back up on, I, I mean, I know I'm attending SMDM uh, remotely for the next uh, three Tuesdays, I think. Um, and there are a couple of our courses at SMDM. Again, I would sort of, I mean, I, those courses are great and I think they will be really, really good at getting more people interested in R, but they're not necessarily targeting the right people mm. because SMDM members are probably not necessarily uh, the group that needs to be targeted. Um, you know, I would... Uh, you know, suggest that maybe, and I don't know whether it'll go ahead because who knows what the world will be like by next year, but HTAI is in Manchester, for example, next year. You know, that to me seems like an ideal opportunity to actually catch some of the people we, we need to catch, um, you know, maybe through a series of very simple, straightforward introductions to us. Thank you. Benedictus, any thoughts? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so, um, regarding R and the use of HDS, I, I can see advantages, um, not only when it comes to the actual model, but also throughout the process uh, of um, uh, reaching there. But all of them have to do with, you know, using R as a tool that can help uh, visualize uh, curves uh, play around with the R signing, so they can be um, an R signing application can be very useful when we do validation of uh, the extrapolations with um, KOLs. Uh, of course, traditionally this was always being done by showing some curves and having some uh, descriptive statistics about the uh, survival at particular time points, like five years survival, ten years survival, and and it and it works. Um, but the, uh, the the visuals that we can uh, have with uh, an R shiny app can facilitate that. Uh, also, when it comes to discussions about effect modification or some things like that, having that visual and interactive uh, framework can be helpful in, the, in that communication. But that doesn't mean that the methods change. It is, it is the same method. So uh, we would follow uh, the appropriate methods. Now, um, another point that um, I wanted to mention here is that um, uh, the, the, about this reluctance of um, uh, our clients, pharmaceutical companies to use R. Um, 
we have uh, had some, um, uh, over, over the last years, we have had some requests uh, in building models, you know, uh, which, so we see uh, an upward trend for these requests. However, uh, the reluctance is evidence from the very beginning. So, um, in most cases, our clients have asked us to move into R, do calculations and return into Excel. So uh, most of these situations that we got a request had to do with dynamic modeling, particularly for vaccines, because um, the, for, for the, this kind of, uh, of models, uh, we need to uh, have differential equations to estimate the proportion of susceptible exposed infected recovered patients. And uh, that can be solved in, uh, in Excel, uh, with the approximation of Euler's method, but it can be more efficient uh, and uh, more straightforward to do that in R. Uh, however, these um, uh, client requests uh, were um, to, to develop the model in uh, R, but then return, actually feed all the inputs into Excel, move into R, then return back with the results. Uh, so that the interface would remain Excel, which was uh, helping the companies communicate that model with their affiliates. Um, to some extent, this is unnecessary because an R shiny application can't do all this work uh, anyway. So, um, but I, I understand this reluctance uh, from uh, the, the client's uh, perspective because they, they are nervous about um, you know, the acceptability uh, of, uh, of such models. Although I read uh, in the um, uh, nice guide to processes of uh, technology appraisals, uh, that NICE accepts fully executable economic models using standard software, that is Excel, um, uh, data triage, R, uh, or WinBugs. So R is included there. Um, but still, we, we do observe this reluctance. This reluctance also um, comes uh, for, for uh, other um, approaches, like um, DICE. So, Evidera has developed DICE. Uh, it is code that is part of um, Excel, but it is very efficient in uh, running descriptive and simulations. It has been uh, validated by NICE, it has been approved, and there are successful submissions. However, still, clients perceive it with some skepticism. Our work there is to um, go and, and explain what it can do, why it offers more flexibility, uh, that uh, uh, we can investigate potentially more scenarios, uh, have the flexibility in the structure. Uh, but we do, it does require effort from us to frequently, not with all clients, but there are clients who will be skeptical. And we need to go and explain that um, to them. So to some extent, there is um, consultants could help promoting, but my decision there would be to promote the right approach rather than the right software. Yes. I, I absolutely agree. And uh, I think perhaps what we're doing is not being extremely clear in what we mean by replacing Excel with R, say, or, or with any, any other kind of software. To me, and this is just my personal view, and I, I'm, again, I'm aware of my own unconscious bias. What we do in terms of the modeling is by and large a statistical exercise. Then there's an economic analysis component to it, which is fundamental. But the building block is the stats analysis. And as such, I think I have a problem when we want to use Excel to do something that is not necessarily fit for purpose. So the complicated calculation, the even fitting the survival models, this is something that even when the model is fully built in Excel, is not done in Excel. And so again, whether you do that in Stata or in R or in SAS, it's a different matter. But maybe we, we need to distinguish more clearly between the, the first part of the model and the second one, which Excel can kind of cope with. And I, I might argue it's not the best tool to do that. And maybe Shiny would be better. But, you know, the visualization of the results is a different story than the building up of the model, perhaps. And this seems to kind of maybe um, 
touch on some of the comments. So there's one which I would like to read out loud and maybe the panel can also comment on. I would argue that there is a massive, whoops, it's gone because more comments piling up. Um, uh, there's a massive status quo bias. Imagine we have started using R for HDA instead of Excel years ago. We had probably built several models that could not be replicated in Excel at all because they're too complicated or too computationally expensive. No one would then ever consider switching to Excel. Uh, and at the moment, however, most models work in Excel. And so it's difficult to demonstrate the advantage of proper start software, which I think builds into the proper start software comment I was making. Um, and then there's another one. I wonder whether there are any reflection on availability of R courses. To me, as I learn R, these fall between two stools. Many, many general introductions exist and many quite advanced courses exist. Not much in the middle, especially targeted at HTA. Uh, something equivalent to joining uh, method, together the two stats methods modeling courses run at York Glasgow based in R to reflect the integrated workflow seems a gap to market in, in the market to me. Um, Andy, you're uh, on my screen right now. Do you want to? Um, I, I, let me let me deal with that one uh, first. Certainly, there is because uh, uh, it's a good plug for the uh, the courses that we have that we have run, and there is a new Glasgow course which I'm involved with, which is uh, being based in R. So that is trying to plug exactly that gap. We're also looking at producing R code for our uh, modeling course that we do jointly with York. So hopefully that will plug some of that that gap but let me if i can pick up on another another question in the chat which was about uh this integrated uh um uh, uh data analysis i'm sorry it, again my chat's also disappearing off the screen so i don't have the exact words but my understanding of the question is that is is along the lines that well r is better suited to doing the uh data analysis and and then the modeling uh, one of the challenges I see with having a fully integrated analysis is the confidentiality of the original data. Um, and I've certainly been in projects, and I'm not just talking about uh, commercial uh, pharmaceutical type companies here, but even, um, uh, even publicly funded data sets are very often uh, jealously guarded in terms of the actual data themselves. Uh, whereas the analyses of the data are less jealously guarded. Um, uh, I can think of Scottish Longitudinal Survey, for example, where you know, they only allow uh, access uh, in, in certain ways, but you can take the analyses that you do outside and, and use those for modeling. So I don't see a particular problem with dividing the two steps at the moment. Um, and I don't see a particular advantage in having those two steps brought together. And by the two steps, I mean the data analysis on the one side and the, the uh, presentation of the cost effectiveness type model on the other. Um, and if those are in two separate packages, I don't fully understand why um, uh, that would be a particular problem. Again, I'd, I'd, I'd repeat my uh, point about uh, complexity. The statistical analysis could easily be complex, but taking the output of that and turning it into a cost effectiveness model could, could generally be kept relatively simple, I believe. So um, I do, I, I am sympathetic to this group's uh, attempts to increase uh, the use of R. Uh, and I hope I will uh, uh, continue to learn from this group. And indeed, I am already trying to, to produce some more R-type output into my own teaching. But I think we need to be, uh, as a community, realistic about uh, the audience. And the audience, at the moment at least, for a fully integrated R-based model is much smaller than it is for a... Uh, uh, the status quo. And I agree with the status quo bias, but that simply is what it is, I'm afraid. R, was not a, R wasn't even around as an option when I started doing my Excel-based course. I'm sorry, do you have any thoughts on this? Yes, I... 
it goes back to it goes back to the original um, argument that if we want to change, we have to show value. And and uh, I can see and and uh, might be wrong, but I can see that the massive massive value of R above all other existing solutions is the transparency. When I say transparency, transparency for the patients, for the clinicians. At, at the moment, you, you, you are, I mean, NICE is producing some, uh, some um, guidelines, making decisions, but the, uh, the rationale behind, behind the decisions uh, uh, is, is sometimes not clearly completely fully explained to the patients or to the clinicians. And if you were, I know it's completely, uh, completely idealistic world, but if you, if you, if we were to, to have some shiny applications uh, with which clinicians, patients could interact to to see the different different scenarios to see uh, what would be the main drivers of uh, of uh, uh, the the, uh, the, the uh, cost effectiveness to 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 uh, to try to to uh, get to the bottom line of the decisions then I, I think R could have a, could have a, um, could have a, a role in that in that increased transparency uh, because again it's open access. Uh, you've got some brilliant, brilliant, uh, brilliant uh, uh, data visualization capabilities, shiny and so on. This is where I think, personally, think again, R could have a, a, could play an important role in the future. Thank you, um, Leeds. Sorry, was that me? Yes, would you like to oh. add any, any, any more points? I don't or, or and also, sorry, uh, ask, uh, answer any of the other points raised in the chat, because this is kind of a weird panel to, uh, uh, to manage in some sense, because normally I would take full control of the questions and uh, only <laughs> what I say can be asked will, will get asked. But in this case, we have a bit wider range. So uh, feel free to go through the chat and respond to any of the points if you, think, if you think that they're, they're worth it. I mean, I did. I just wanted to make, I guess, an, a point about, um, you know, I think one of the things that could be really helpful, one of the presentations I really enjoyed this morning was Yi Chow's presentation about converting an Excel model into R. And I think, you know, there is a lot that could be learned from that uh, process and that presentation. So I would certainly uh, you know, encourage Yi Chow and the, and the others involved in that project that I think that could really help people who are very Excel based to to understand how to make the transition to R. So, I mean, I think that was a really interesting um, and helpful presentation. I don't know if uh, if you have, uh, Andy, uh, you're the only person who was part of that project who's got oh. the mic. So I don't know if there's any plans for that uh, no I well um th this I would say firstly this is very much each hour's initiative so but I am playing the the role of uh, uh, encouraging her to uh, publish that and I'm sure that that is uh, uh, in the in the offing I mean it is an, it is a difficult it is a it's an unusual uh, type of uh, uh, research paper to try and publish but we're confident that there's enough interest in R that uh, that there really is an audience for that sort of uh, research activity because as each al said in the chat this this took a lot of time it took a lot of energy from uh, all the people concerned uh, including getting some uh, fortunately they were minor but nevertheless that they were there errors corrected from the uh, original model I think this is a very good uh Point and uh, it raises the two questions: a, where or, or whether it even exists some kind of place that we could direct our effort in terms of publication. And uh, I think that there may be issues with the normal journals that we would uh, target for a different kind of model because you have to explain all the 
extra things that you have done and that may usually increase the, 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 the length of the paper if you're trying to publish and that might not be necessarily acceptable all the time or, or maybe you do want to explain in details all the extra complexity because you're doing the package or the 